Tonight, we're going to be talking about abortion. I know that's kind of a, a hard topic, but I think it's something that's uh, prudent for us to uh, know about tonight so that we can share with others. Uh, I've noticed that there's been a lot of talk about abortion lately, good and bad, people for it and against it. But where should us as Christians stand on the issue? Well, that's easy. We should stand with the Word of God. Regardless of what our emotions or our feelings may say, or regardless of what our society would dictate, we need to always stand with the Word of God and we need to stand with what His view on it should be. And I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple laws that have been put into place pretty recently. Uh, in New York, not too long ago, maybe one or two years ago, they made it legal to basically uh, murder your baby all the way up to conception. So as your baby is full term, it's okay to go ahead and abort them as long as the doctor deems it fit, you know, for any reason. You know, pretty much giving them carte blanche to decide what that reason reason is you know if they think it is detrimental to the mother's health to go ahead and have the baby well then let's go ahead and kill the baby so pretty much they live leave them a lot of legal wiggle room and of course they're going to use that and exploit that unfortunately because we live in some sad times but thankfully on a positive note here in texas we've just recently passed a bill to where they're against it. Texas is one of the leading states to like put a halt on abortion. Uh, I don't know if they've totally outlawed it, but I know for a fact that they've diminished it greatly, which is such a huge blessing. Uh, thank you, Bible Belt. Amen. I'm proud to be a Texan. You know, I'm, I'm proud to live in Texas. Uh, nevertheless, uh, abortion is going on all over the world. And the sad part of it, the, the really sad part, is that Christians are okay with it. Not everybody, but there are Christians who are okay with it. And that's what really breaks my heart, and I know it breaks God's heart, because people who without God are going to do what they're going to do. But people who are supposed to be called by God and set apart for His purposes, people that are supposed to have the Holy Spirit, should stand up for the Word of God and not be against it on any account. And unfortunately, there is this one matter about abortion where some Christians are for it. So tonight, we're going to go over some scriptures talking about why we, as Christians, should not be for abortion for any reason. I know they like to break out, you know, well, what if somebody was to get raped? You know, what about that circumstance? Well, that is an unfortunate thing to happen, but that baby did not do you any harm. That baby is not going to hurt you in any way. You should cherish your baby, however it came about. Amen? And if you cannot live to take care of that baby and you just can't stand and it'll remind you of being raped, there's adoption. You don't have to murder your baby. There's adoption, okay? There's other options out there and murder doesn't need to be one of them. But let's go to the scripture. Exodus 20, verse 13. Very simple, it's one of the commandments, one of the 10 commandments. He says, you shall not murder. Pretty simple, that covers all our bases, right? Murder for any reason. But how much more so than an innocent, an innocent baby? In another place, God says that he hates the shed of innocent blood. It doesn't get any more innocent than a baby living on the inside of you. How innocent? Hasn't even said their first word, hasn't even taken their first step, and you're going to murder them? But let's just say, for example, is abortion murder? Because some people like to say, well, it's not technically alive yet. It's not technically a baby yet. They like to get on those technical forms and say, oh, well, it's not really murder. Okay, but right now in our law, if you kill a pregnant woman, it is considered a double homicide for killing the woman and the baby inside. So you tell me if abortion is murder. So on one instance, it's not murder, but on another it is. I guess it's whatever fits their narrative, right? If it's for abortion, hey, it's not considered a life yet. It's okay to murder. They don't even want to call it murder. But if it's a double homicide, hey, yeah, that's murder. You know, that's that's killing a baby. It, it doesn't make any sense. 
But let's consider more scripture. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth or our mother's wombs. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they all were written the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Let's break down the scripture for a second. You formed my inward parts. All right, so we already know that we're on the inside of our mother's wombs. And there's a growth process. There's many stages to a baby's life cycle. All right, and God is forming everything. As we know, God is the creator of all things. And he intricately puts together the baby and the mother's womb. He's forming the inward parts, our organs, right? Our veins and all of these things. He says, you covered me in my mother's womb. And then keep moving on. It says, my frame was not hidden from you. So hold on for a second. Let's just think about a house being framed for a second. Have you ever seen a house framed before? That's just basically the bare bones of the house. It's just the lumber going up, right? You got the concrete poured. You got all the pipes ready for, to receive for the plumbing and the electrical. And now we're putting up the bones. We're putting up the, the wood, the wood the, the inside of the interior of the house is gonna look like. You have a kind of a visual concept you walk through and you say, oh, okay, well, this is where the kitchen's gonna go, or this is where the, the bathroom's gonna go, and the bedroom, and so on and so forth. But it's just the bare bones, right? It's not the house yet, it's just the bones. And that's what it says here. The frame was not hidden from you. So although the baby has not been fully formed yet, there's a frame going on there. There's some... some uh, creation going on there. We know it's going to be a baby, right? We know it's not going to be a banana. It's not going to be an art vark. It's not going to be a baboon. It's not going to be a telephone pole. We know that's going to be a baby on the inside there, right? We know that. And we can even tell by each stage, okay? Oh, that's that's an embryo or that, you know, that's so and so. Oh, now it's starting to look more like a baby, but it isn't fully formed yet. But it's starting. It's a process. And then it goes on to say, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Now, what is a substance? Basically something you can't identify, right? Something you just know, oh, I don't know what that is, but it's something. It's a substance, right? You know, sometimes I'll walk throughout my house and I'll step in something and I'll go, oh, it's a substance. You know, I don't know what that is. I got kids, you know, they run around and they... They, they, you know, they're eating spaghetti or my dog might have thrown up. I don't know what it is. I just know I stepped in some goo. <laughs> I stepped in a substance. And that's basically what that baby is, is a substance. And then it says being unformed. So it's not fully formed yet, but it is unformed. And it says even in that unformed substance stage, God has already written in his book the days for their life. Not formed, not, you can't, can't even tell it's a baby yet. It's just a frame. It's just a substance. It's unformed. But even in that earliest stage, God has already fashioned the days for that baby. God is already working out his plan for their life. Believe it or not, God has a plan for all of us. It's up to us to walk in that plan, obviously. But he has a plan for everybody. He, everybody has a part in the kingdom if you want to take part in it. But he writes the days fashioned for them. So if God is already working out a plan for their life, who are we to cut that short? Who are we to say, let me murder that out. Let me stop God's plan. See, we as Christians should understand this. Amen? It's understandable for the lawless ones to do this. It's understandable for the wicked ones to do this. But not us. We should know better, amen? And as I'm presenting this information to you, you probably already have the stance of I'm against abortion. And that's great, but you also need to be able to stand up for the truth and tell others 
why they should be against abortion as well. It's an uncomfortable topic and it can stir up controversy, but nevertheless, we are the, in the end times and we need to be able to stand our ground on what is truth. And how much more should we stand up for the innocent? Amen? The innocent ones. The babies. Alright, let's go to the next scripture. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. So even this process of making a baby on the inside, some of us may not fully understand. However, we do know for a fact that God is the one creating the baby. And it is a person who, anybody who has a baby, they are with child, right? They are with child. We know that. We would agree with that. So it is God who gets the glory. God clearly understands that a woman, when a woman is pregnant, she is with child even before the bones begin to grow. They are with child, right? From the point of conception. How come we don't collectively believe that as Christians? Has the devil deceived us? I think he has. Anybody that thinks that it's okay to get an abortion, the devil has deceived you. I believe that everybody here does not advocate abortion in any way. However, there are many among us who do. Christians who say that it is okay. Now, this truth extends past political platforms. I know the Democratic Party is all for abortion. The Republican Party is against it. It doesn't matter which political party you associate with, we should all be against abortion because God is against it. Amen? That's who we side with. Jeremiah 1.5 Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now God's speaking about Jeremiah here. However, before he even formed you in the womb, he knew you. Before you were born, he sanctified you. So while we are still in our mother's wombs, God sets us apart. If he has a plan for you to serve him in his kingdom, he sets you apart for that kingdom. Amen? Sets you apart in service for him. He orders your days. He has a plan for your life, in other words. Anybody thankful for that plan? Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 49, 1 and verse 5 as well. Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, or Israel. So that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. We're not talking about Neo here. However, nevertheless, we grow in our mother's womb, or the matrix. That's another word that not many of us say nowadays, but the matrix is basically the, pe the place in which we develop or take form. All right? So as we're developing, we are being developed by God. He is forming us in our mother's wombs. Job 10, verses 8, 11, and 12. Your hands have made me and fashioned me an intricate unity. And then this is Job speaking, and he says, Yet you would destroy me? He's talking to God, because we all know what Job was going through. And he's saying, you, you, you fashioned me, you've made me in my mother's womb, with intricate unity, our bodies are put together with such precision. Bones and, and veins and organs and all of it working together, all these systems working together. We don't think about it because we just get up and go, but everything that goes into making a human is a great big process. Amen. Just our neural network and our brains and our, and our DNA, all of it is very intricate. God creates us. Amen. Only He could. And then Job says, but you would destroy me? And then verse 11, it says, you clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews or, you know, uh, basically veins and, you know, arteries and all that stuff. You have granted me life and favor and your care has preserved my spirit. So he put us together, he knit us together, and it's a, a big process God is 
working on the inside of a mother's womb. He's creating his artwork. He's creating his creation. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes along and says, No, stop. Who are we to stop God from creating? Can you imagine? Let's just stop for a second and imagine somebody who is a painter. A famous painter, Pablo Picasso, or somebody of those of that era, and they're sitting there painting a masterpiece. And then somebody comes along and says, Stop! And they just destroy their artwork. What a travesty, right? How much worse do you think God feels as He's creating life? And He's putting them together with intricacy. And somebody comes along and rips that apart and destroys it. Who does that sound like? That sounds like the devil. Amen, Brill. He is the one of destruction. God is the one who creates life. The devil destroys. So should we be for destruction? Or should we be for life? It's as simple as that, folks. Are we going to destroy what the Creator is creating? Are we going to just let him finish his work? Because each and every single one of us are a masterpiece to him. Every single one of us in this room is a unique masterpiece, whether you believe that or not. Because we can get down on ourselves and have all these things that we say about ourselves. We can be our worst enemy sometimes. Say, I'm not pretty. Have you ever said that about yourself before? I'm ugly, I'm fat, and are all, all these things, and we get down on ourselves. But God looks at us and says, you are beautiful because I have created you. Each and every single one of us is a unique piece of art that He loves. Who are we to stop the artist, to cut his hands short from doing what he does best, creating? Even more so, we have a responsibility to advocate this truth. We have a responsibility to, responsibility to uphold this truth. Amen? As Christians, it is controversial and it will cause anger and frustration. However, we need to be on the side of life. Not only do we need to silently think that, think, think that but we need to also vocally speak it so that others can know where we stand. And we stand with God. Amen? We stand with the truth. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 22, 9 through 10. But you are He who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breasts. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. You see that? From the mother's womb, where we should be protected. Who... Uh, God has been their God from the mother's womb. How do you know what your baby will become in the Lord? Your baby might be a mighty prophet for the Lord and you're destroying it. You're stopping the plan that God has set for them. Who are you to take that away from God? Our final scripture tonight. Luke 1, 39-44. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now, as we know, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. And inside of Elizabeth was John the Baptist. And inside of Mary was Jesus. And when Mary came and said, Hey, I'm here. Hi, how you doing? Or whatever, you know, greeting. The baby that was inside of Elizabeth, ooh, Oh, my goodness. Inside of her. Leap for joy. And she knew it. She knew something was going on. She knew that this was special. She was overcome by the Holy Spirit. And she knew that the Lord had come. And even inside of Mary's womb, He was still the Lord. Amen? Even inside of the mother's womb, He was still the Lord. And the babies connected to one another somehow. 
the babies that are inside their mother's wombs. How far along of the process of their birth, I mean, of, of their creation, I don't know. They were still incubating, you know, they're, they're still growing inside there. Each one of them were different stages of, of, of growing. Nevertheless, everybody knew that it was the babies that were talking that day. Amen? The babies. And we should make sure that we care for the babies too. Not just the ones that are already born, but also the ones that are on the inside. Amen? Ronald Reagan said, I can't help but notice all the people that are for abortion have already been born. Isn't that the truth? Anybody that is advocating killing another has already been born. What if somebody would have said that about you? What if somebody would have said, no, let's get rid of them. Let's kill them. What a sad state our world is in. But with this understanding, we need to be vocal about our stance on being pro-life. And the Word of God, how we are able to be against abortion. And do whatever we can to fight against it. And sharing this information that you heard tonight is one of the ways. Sharing this truth with your family and friends is another. Even though it may be uncomfortable. If the conversation arises and you hear somebody in earshot that says, Hey, I'm for abortion, blah, blah, blah. Instead of running and tucking tail and hiding from the controversy, we need to say, hey, God is for life, and I'm for life too. Amen? It's going to be tough sometimes. You're going to cause anger and frustration, and people are not going to like you. But we're not in this to make people our friend. We're not in this to be liked. We're in this to get people out of darkness. And sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes it's going to be frustration. Sometimes it's a sword. It's not always peace. Just like Jesus said, I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword. People's enemies shall be them of their own household, of their own family. Because we stand up for the truth and it's going to make some of them mad at us. But we can't shy away from it. Because this is the kind of truth that saves people's lives. Who knows of the conversation that you have with somebody who is against life and you share with them this truth and they go home and they decide, you know what? I'm not going to get an abortion. I'm going to have my baby because of what they said to me. And now I'm convicted. And now I'm going to have my baby. And that baby grows up to do mighty things for the Lord. That baby, because of what you said, because you weren't scared to stand up for the truth. How now has a chance to be born and now goes on to do mighty things for God. And He uses them in a mighty way. Whew. But you got to speak up. Even when it's uncomfortable. There's going to be times when you're not feeling up to talking about it. Because you know, I'm fixing to stir the pot. I'm fixing to kick the hornet's nest. Trust me, I've kicked the many of them. I like killing hornets, though. I like killing wasps. It's one of my favorite pastimes. And if I see one, I'll kick it just to kill it. Amen? Sometimes we got to be that way. Not scared of the fight, but if the fight's coming, I'm going to fight it. Amen? I ain't going to be scared. I'm going to stand up for the truth. I'm going to stand up for that innocent baby that can't stand up for themselves that can't speak up for themselves. But because I'm a Christian, and I know these scriptures now, because nobody has an excuse anymore, we know the scripture. God is against abortion, and He's for life. And we see that even as a baby that's on the inside of us, God has already predestined a plan for them, has already ordained them for Him and His purposes. Now, whether they live up to that or not, whether they go against Him once they're alive, that's... That's not up to us. But what is up to us is to uphold the truth and to stand up for it and speak up for it. Because if nobody else, if nobody does, we have a chance. Even if nobody else does, we have a voice. We better use it though.